Hi everyone, I'm Scott, Children's Services Manager at Durham County Library. Thanks for joining me today. In today's video, I'm going to highlight one of my favorite parts of the library collection, juvenile biographies. I think this is a bit of an overlooked part of our collection and it deserves your attention. These books are a lot of fun to read for a few reasons. First, it's just plain inspiring to explore some of the fascinating stories around these amazing people. And second, juvenile biographies cover a wide variety of reading levels. Sure, some of the books can be a little longer or more challenging reads, but the ones I'm going to show you today, they'll work great just alongside your picture books. They have accessible texts and really beautiful artwork throughout. And finally, you can have fun with a lot of different genres by reading juvenile biographies. For example, maybe you usually read science fiction stories. Well, why not check out a biography about real-life astronauts? Or maybe you like action and adventure stories. Well, hey, check out some biographies about pirates who actually sailed our seas. I think you'll be surprised at what you discover. We're going to cover four different books today, and I'm also going to share some suggested activities that you can do as a family. Let's check them out. The first book is Girl on a Motorcycle, written by Amy Noveski and illustrated by Julie Morstad. Let's take a closer look. This book follows Anne Franz Dauville, the first woman to ride a motorcycle around the world alone. She started her journey in 1973 when she flew from her home in Paris to Canada. She traveled from the eastern side of Canada and traveled all the way through Alaska. From there, she flew to Japan, and from there on to Bombay, India, where she traveled through Asia all the way back home. En France wrote during her travels, I want the world to be beautiful, and it is beautiful. I want people to be good, and they are good. These are inspiring words, and such an inspiring story of the brave and adventurous woman. I know you'll love following along her journey. It features poetic words and beautiful pictures of the diverse people and places she met. And now for the activity. Families, I want you to sit down and talk about travels. Where are some of the places you visited? What did you like and what did you learn? Where would you like to go in the future? What kind of adventures do you dream of? And on to our next suggestion. Try it! How Frida Kaplan Changed the Way We Eat, written by Mara Rockcliffe and illustrated by Giselle Potter. This is such a fun book. Let's take a closer look. Frida Kaplan was born in Los Angeles, California in 1923 to Russian Jewish immigrant parents. This book follows Frida's career when she began to work as a produce seller at the Los Angeles 7th Street Produce Market in the 1950s. Soon after, Frida started her own company in 1962 and was the first American woman to own and operate a wholesale produce business. Today, we have Frida to thank for introducing us to many of the foods we love. You see, in the 1950s, the produce market did not sell that many different fruits and vegetables, but Frida wanted to try everything, and she shared that curiosity with others. Over the years, she helped introduce Americans to countless foods, including kiwis, tomatillos, alfalfa sprouts, and habanero peppers. This is such a fun and colorful read, and it'll definitely make you hungry. And now for the family activity inspired by this book trying something new. Have you ever seen a fruit or vegetable at the grocery store that you've never had? Well, don't be afraid, try it. Maybe you're inspired to mix it into some dishes you already love. Or do you need a helping hand on where to start? Durham County Library has you covered with hundreds of cookbooks to check out. Go ahead and try it. And on to our next book, A Song for Gwendolyn Brooks, written by Alice Faye Duncan, and illustrated by Zaya Gordon. Let's take a closer look. This book traces the life of American poet Gwendolyn Brooks, the first black writer to win the Pulitzer Prize. She was born in 1917 and spent most of her life in the south side of Chicago, Illinois, and you will meet her family and community that inspired much of her poetry. The text in this book is in a beautiful poetic style with dreamy pictures plus some of Gwendolyn Brooks' own poetry. 
One reason this is such a great book for families to read is because you'll discover how Brooks was passionate about poetry at a young age, and her parents always nurtured her art. In fact, a few of the poems featured in this book, Gwendolyn Brooks wrote them when she was only 11 years old. I know you can do a great job writing poetry too. Here's a project to get you started. Do you see? I've made a flower. You could draw this or build it with construction paper like I did. In the middle, I am. And on all of the petals, you can write the things that make you special. I am a pizza pro. I love cooking pizza. I am creative. I am a drummer. I am a book lover. I am a friend and I am curious. I know there are a lot of things that make you special and you're gonna do a great job building a poem flower just like this one. Have fun. And the final recommendation, The Girl Who Named Pluto, the story of Venetia Burney, written by Alice B. McGinty and illustrated by Elizabeth Hadle. This is a great book. Let's take a look inside. Venetia was born in Oxford, England in 1918. She was a curious child. She loved to learn as much as she could, and she especially loved to learn about Greek and Roman mythology and outer space. Now, have you ever heard of Pluto? When you look into the sky, you can see some planets like Jupiter and Venus, but Pluto is so far away, it was only discovered by researchers in Flagstaff, Arizona in 1930. Now, until the year 2006, Pluto was called our ninth planet in the solar system. Let's go ahead and count them together. It starts with number one, closest to the sun. Mercury, Venus, Earth, our own home planet, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and nine, Pluto. But over time, scientists discovered more objects in space that were about the same size as Pluto. They decided to call it a dwarf planet, which meant it was reduced to only eight planets in our solar system. Well, when scientists first discovered the dwarf planet in 1930, it needed a name. Venetia, who was 12 years old at the time, heard the news and thought to herself, hmm, a planet so far away from the sun must be dark and freezing. And then she remembered, in Roman mythology, the deep underworld, ruled by Pluto. She suggested the name to her grandfather, who helped get her idea from Oxford, England, all the way to the scientists in Arizona. Go Venetia! I hope her story inspires you to learn more about our amazing universe. For the final activity today, let's cut away to a great resource. This is the NASA Kids Club website. Just like young Venetia, you too can learn all about outer space. This website is rich with information, plus stunning photos and videos from around the universe. And families, check out the website's many games and activities. A great place to start is here on the homepage, STEM activities for grades K through four. Dig into science experiments, crafts, and puzzles. I'll leave you with that. I hope you have fun with today's many activities. There's a whole world, or even universe, to explore when you check out awesome juvenile biographies. See you next time. Bye!